This is a walkthrough of the Earl Boyd's Projects Animation Controller. In the source directory, it's animate.earl. I'm using MacVim, and this is the Nerd Tree plugin. So you can see in the source directory, we have animate.earl. Standard license stuff. It's the animate module, and it's a gen server behavior, and all our exported functions. We have uh, a macro to say that an empty list is actually no args. That's what we're specifying. In our state, we store whether we're running, what automated or autonomous processes we have called voids, the WebSocket PID that we want to send stuff to, a PID for a buffer. That buffer is anything that we're going to send um, so that we can send it in chunks. That way, the web page can clear the HTML5 canvas and then draw everything it's got in the last interval. And then we have a, a PID for a heat map that tracks the heat that is generated by these voids running around, um, or the presence, or the smell, or whatever you want it to be. And then the height and the width of the canvas. So this is our public interface. This is run from within a module that calls it, and then it uses GenServer cast to send a message to the GenServer process. This is not run within the GenServer process itself. It's run within whatever module calls it. I found that really confusing when I was first learning Erlang. Start GenServer. Start Gen Server is used by the supervisor. It has a simple one for one child specification and it starts up, it calls this function here with the PID of the WebSocket uh, handler that started us. And so we do Gen Server start link and that will call our module. It's a macro that says this module. So it'll contain animate, animate. And it passes any term and we're not using any of the options that you can specify when starting a Gen Server like you know like debugging stuff or whatever or a timeout and this just goes directly to init so this again is run by the not by the gen server itself but by the supervisor and then this will be run by the gen server process itself when it gets initialized and so it'll get that animate uh, websocket pid and it sends the animate websocket the cowboy websocket handler it sends the, its own uh, PID, which we don't need to do because when a simple one-for-one -one supervisor um, spec when or when supervisor starts a child with that simple one-for-one, -one, it will send back the PID that it started. So we don't need to do this. It's superfluous. We don't take any calls. Uh, so I just IO format anything we get on a call, but we do take um, several casts. So any cast, just to, as I was building this, I wanted to see any cast we got. Uh, we initialize our random number generator with the current time. Some people use um, crypto rand bytes, which seems better. Um, I'm just in the habit of using OS timestamp. The reason I'm not using now um, is just a habit because if you call now often enough, it um, will skew your clock because now guarantees that it will be a unique number. So if you call this faster than the number is incrementing, um, it will update the time to make sure that it's a, a unique number. Uh, a unique um, tuple. So we get our animate WebSocket PID out of our state and we start up our heat map process and then we um, uh, send ourselves a message to render the heat map. So when we're done with this handling this cast, uh, this is our start cast. So the WebSocket has told us to start up or somebody on a web page has told us to start up and the WebSocket handler has passed that through. Then we uh, want to get this init code done, and then after that's handled, then we'll tell ourselves to render the heat map. And that will kick off um, a, a cycle of rendering the heat map after um, every specified interval. We also want to spawn up our, spawn, uh, our buffer, and we tell the buffer what the WebSocket PID is, so it can send stuff to the WebSocket PID itself, and we give it a cycle time, which reads out of an environment variable so that all the processes that are running have the same cycle time. Um, they don't need to be the same, but if I want to experiment around and change the cycle time, I don't have to change it every file, so it just grabs it from an environment variable. Then we store our max, or get our max uh, height and width of the canvas uh, out of our state, and then we create some void specs, specs for autonomous processes. This is simply what shape to call and then what color to give that, what the, what the maximum colors we should um, use for that one. So this would be somewhere uh, in some kind of red, some kind of green, 
uh, some kind of mix of red and green, a mix of green and blue, uh, up to you know up to these values for red, green, blue, etc. This one will be a, a rectangle, and then there's a Pac-Man shape that I'll draw. So we'll start a new void for every one of these specifications that we've said. So here we can see we're using a list comprehension for every spec. We take the shape and the RGB, and then we start a void, giving it the buffer PID, so it'll send its drawing updates to the buffer. A heat map PID, it'll 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 send its change and get its get the heat from other voids from the heat map, and then the shape, the max height of the canvas, max width of the canvas, so it knows the bounds of where it can go, and then the RGB, uh, that's uh, the max RGB that it'll generate a random color from. Then we don't reply uh, to this when uh, the WebSocket handler has handled um, from the WebSocket from the web page a start call. It's cast, you can see here in the public interface, it's cast to us, so we don't need to reply. So we say no reply, and we pass back our new state. So our new void PIDs, our new buffer PID, our new heat map PID, and the fact that we're running. Then if we stop, uh, we get our voids we get that we're running is true. We only handle this if we're actually running. And then we get our buffer PID and our heat map PID, and we tell all the voids to stop, and we tell the buffer to stop, and then the heat map to stop. So you can see heat map actually has an API for this, whereas the buffer just uh, has a handle info call for this, or just does a receive call. And then we, uh, if we're told a new height, or a new width, then we simply store that in the state, and we don't reply, and then anything else, we simply output to the console what we got and we just return the same state. If we get any um, raw messages from other processes, uh, the only one we handle is render heat map. And we grab the heat map PID, uh, we tell the heat map to render, and this is a public API function, we just pass it the PID. Um, so we're calling this code, and then within that code, it'll send a message to the actual heat map process telling it to render. And then we, um, uh, when we've rendered the heat map, it comes back, and then we encode that in JSON, and then we store that, and then we send that to the uh, uh, WebSocket, and we've stored the WebSocket PID in our state, so we just grab that PID, send it to JSON, and then we kick off another render cycle, so we get the cycle time, and after that time, uh, we want to send a message to ourselves saying render the heat map again. So this will uh, do a cycle of rendering the heat map. And then any other info, any other messages that come in from other processes that aren't gen server casts or calls, uh, we're just going to output to the console. This is mandatory for a gen server. I don't do anything, just return the new state, so we can't upgrade this, or at least if we upgrade, we can't change the state. And if we terminate, I don't need to do anything, I just say OK. And I think we've done, we've started all these processes with spawn, but we didn't do spawn link, so that will, I think, leave some processes running, but they'll probably crash when the animator controller disappears. And then cycle time just goes to the uh, application get end. And I learned something the other day at work, that if you use the, th um, the three argument version of, of get end, you don't have to um, get back an OK tuple, you can provide a default and you'll just get either the, the application variable, uh, the environment variable, or your default. So you can just return application, get env, and then the, th the three argument version. That is the animation controller for Earl Boyd's.